Okay, my seventh grade friends, Thursday, April 23, here we go. Estimate to the nearest integer. All right. Uh, let me pause here real quick. Grab my calculator. My mistake, sorry about that. We want to have that here in tow, ready to go for what we're doing today. Um, we've gotten used to some longer videos. That is not going to be the case today. We are going to be able to zoom right through this. Uh, this is not going to be difficult at all for you, uh, for any of you. So we're looking at estimate to the nearest integer. Basically, all we want to do is figure is to round these to the nearest whole number or integer, negative, positive, whatever. So I look at number one, which is the square root of 37. Uh, so I'm going to punch in uh, 37, and I'm going to punch in square root. And you can see that I get an answer of 6.082762530. Not a perfect square. That were to keep going. That's not a terminating decimal. But I look and I see that since I ended up with, and it might be a little easier to see here, 6.08, all right, uh, and it went on. To the nearest integer means the ones place, nearest number. So this zero that comes after the decimal is going to tell me what to do with this six. Well, the rules of rounding, four and less we round down, five and higher we round up, tells me to round down, which means I'm going to round down and keep this a six. Rounding down does not mean make this a five. Rounding down means to keep this a six. If I were to round it up, it would become a seven. So I'm going to put six. Notice I don't put equals. The square root of 37 does not equal 6. All right, it just means that estimated to the nearest integer, as our directions say, this would be 6. So let's go to number 2. All right, uh, the square root, it wants the negative square root of 587. I can ignore the negative sign until the end. Okay, I just need to remember to make it negative. So when I come over here to my calculator, 587, press my square root button. I get some 24.2, all right? So that's what I'm gonna write down because all I need is one place after the decimal to tell me where that's going to go. Well, so I need the nearest integer, so I'm gonna round it to the ones place. So the four is what's in the ones place right before the decimal. The two once again tells me to round down because four and less I round down, okay? So when I round this to the nearest integer, I'm going to get 24. Don't forget, though, it's the negative square root. So this is going to become a negative 24. Number 3 is no different. I'm going to go 37 over 5. I can come over here to my calculator. 37, my fraction button, over 5. I can square root that. And I end up with 2.7, it looks like. So I'm going to come over here. 2.7, five and higher, I round up. So that tells me since my two is in the ones place and that's the place I'm rounding to, that I'm gonna have to make that a three because five and higher, I round up. So that to the nearest integer is going to be three. All right, and that's estimating things to the nearest integer. So that's not bad. Let's go to our next section, which is simply asking us which number is greater, okay? Uh, we think about a number line. We know number lines. We have zero, then we have one, two, three, and we go this way, negative one, negative two, negative three, and we have all of these numbers in between there, square roots, decimals, all this sorts of stuff going on. You know, we're well beyond in seventh grade that you realize that there's a whole lot of numbers that come between one and two. There's a whole lot of numbers that come between two and three. You know, it's infinite. We could go on all day. Uh, it's not that fun, so we're not going to. But, you know, we're, you're mature enough now in your math where we don't really have to talk about that and explain that. You understand that. So, we look at number one. All we need to know is which one is greater. And we've got two numbers here. We've got 15 and the square root of 30. Well, I don't have to do anything with 15. I can handle 15. And then I think, well, 30, if I just want to check that, 30, uh, 
square root? Well, I get like 5.47. So that's somewhat bigger than 5, and it's less than 6, but it's nowhere near 15. So the greater number is definitely 15. Now, you're not going to be circling it like I did. You're just going to have to write the answer down on your paper, but I'm just circling it here on the video just to acknowledge which one is uh, greater. On your paper, you will actually have to write which number is bigger. And in this case, for number one, you would write down 15. Number two is the square root of 133 and 10 and 3 fourths. Well, this one's a little interesting. So let's come over here to our calculator again. We want the square root of 133. So we're going to come over here, 133 square root. And I get 11.5, if I look at that closely. Uh, yep, 11.5 something. So we get 11.5. And from there, it's not equal, but it's pretty close. I should be able to pretty easily come to a conclusion as to which one is bigger. This is only 10 and 3 fourths, which means this is bigger than 10, but less than 11. This is 11.5, uh, which means it's somewhere between 11 and 12. It's bigger than 11. This one's smaller than 11. Thus, the bigger number is the square root of 133. Do make sure on your paper, uh, seventh graders, that you put the original number. Even though you punch this into your calculator and you get 11.5, it's not 11.5 I want to see in your paper. On your paper, you would need to write down the square root of 133, whatever the original problem is that the paper gives you. All right? So uh, there's, there's that. Here's the last one that we're going to look at. The square root, the negative square root of 0 0.35, or actually... 0 0.35. Now, if I go to my calculator, I'm going to plug in 0 0.35 square root, and I'm going to get like 0.59, uh, what am I going to get here? 0 0.59 something, okay, 0.59 and of course, that has to be negative because it's the negative square root. Well, this gives me enough to know which number is greater, okay? Because here I have 0.59, but here I have 0.35. Now, don't be in such a rush that you automatically assume that this is the bigger number because if you're rushing, you may stop and think, well, that's bigger. That's 0.59. 59 is bigger than 35. And you're not wrong when you say that. But remember, these are negative numbers. And with negative numbers, the smaller the actual digits, the bigger the number is. So actually, negative 0.35 is actually bigger than negative 0.59. Just like the same idea that negative two is bigger than negative four. Okay, closer to zero on the number line. All right, we'll talk more about this. Answer any questions you need during our Zoom time, Thursday morning, April 23. All right, we'll talk to you later, seventh grade. Bye.